Hi there, my name is Mitro Mashansky. In this video, I will show you how to configure your Hasura project in order to support multi-environments. This is a crucial thing for development in a team or if you're going to deploy a project to different environments by using CI-CD pipelines. By the way, talking about CI-CD pipelines, this video is a part of the whole course where I show how to deploy a Hasura project to different environments like development or production using GitHub Actions. And this section is a part of the complete 6 hours video course about Hasura GraphQL engine, which you can find by following links in the video description. But let's get started with the tutorial right now. Hello guys, welcome to this lesson. In this video, we will improve our infrastructure setup for our Hasura project, and we're gonna make it more flexible in terms of multi-environment support. The changes which we're going to make here will allow us to easily switch our Hasura action endpoints, as well as remote schemas, Hasura events, and also we will see how to handle sensitive data like console secret password without exposing it to the version control system like Git. So let's get started. I'm gonna navigate to our actions tab and I will open create user action as example. You can see here that the handler is hard coded and it points out to one of our cloud function, which is being served locally. The same you can see also for remote schemas. And if you navigate to events tab, we will see the same thing. But if we get back to our actions and open any of them, you can see this small note, which says that you can use environment variable as a part of the handler URL and then you can just concatenate it. So let's create such a variable in our Docker Compose file. So I will name it as an action base URL and we can go back to Hasura UI and grab it from here. So this is gonna be our base URL for our actions. Then I will do absolutely the same for remote schema. And also for our event, which should notify the user about the new comment to the photo. The next step is to replace our hardcoded URLs with values which come from environment variables. You can do it in Hasura console right here, but I would like to show you how you can change it directly in the code. You just have to go to the actions YAML file, which located under the metadata folder, and you have to replace our hard-coded values with the environment variable, which we defined just a few moments ago. And do not forget also to close single quotes because the value should be a valid string. And also do not forget to do the similar things also for remote table where we need to replace URL property to URL from NV and replace the URL itself with the environment variable. And the last but not least, it is our event which is um, located in the tables file, just scroll a little bit down and replace the webhook uh, property with webhook from NV and replace the URL with the environment variable as well. Now everything is updated. So we have to restart now our Docker container in order to initialize our new environment variables. And now, once containers have been restarted, we can apply this new metadata to our Hasura instance. I hope you remember how to do it. Yeah, so just let's go to Hasura server folder and in your terminal run 
Hasura metadata apply. And as you can see, it was applied successfully. Now, if we reload our Hasura console, we will see that our endpoints were either concatenated with the base URL variable like actions, or the endpoint comes completely from environment variable like for remote schema here. Now I would like to highlight another problem. And the problem is that these values in Docker Compose uh, YAML, they are also hard-coded to some extent. I mean that if you need to work in a team, it might be that every developer may want to have its own Firebase project, which means that all these endpoints along with the Hasura JWT secret will be different to another developers. And every time someone push changes to the repo, it will break the project for another developer who has different setup, right? I hope you agree with me that it should never happen. So we need to somehow exclude this configuration from version control system. So how, how would we handle it? I would suggest you to extract this sensitive data into a separate file called .nv, which I'm gonna create under Hasura server folder. And I move those variables from Docker Compose into this new file. And then I just replace the semicolons with equal sign. Once I'm done with this, I go to the Docker Compose and I'm gonna import that file by using nv underscore file property. And I'm just declare here the path to my .nv file. Here is a very important moment. The .nv file must be inside git ignore. So we can be sure that the sensitive information from .nv will never be exposed to the GitHub or somewhere else. But how another developers will know which variables should be provided in order to work with the project? Well, there is some convention to solve this issue. We can create a new file called .nv.example and we can list here all necessary variables uh, with maybe some just dummy placeholders. And you can also leave here some comments which will, will be explaining what developers should do with it. And exactly this file should be tracked by Git and should be pushed to the Git repository. The next thing I would like to highlight is our config.yaml, which Hasura CLI uses when we run any CLI command like Hasura console, Hasura metadata apply, and so on. Here we have the duplication of Hasura admin secret. But the truth is that when we have this .nv file under the Hasura server folder, we don't need to define it here anymore. Instead, Hasura will read it from environment variable Hasura GraphQL admin secret. So we can easily remove this field here and also we could remove the endpoint as well because by default it will be localhost 8080 anyway. The next part which is affected by our change is the config of the code generator, which allows us to generate TypeScript interfaces from GraphQL endpoint. Here you can see that we provide also Hasura admin secret header, which is also hard coded. So we have to replace it with our Hasura admin secret environment variable. So I can do it like this. And after the semicolon, you can define any, I don't know, default value in case if an environment variable was not provided. This endpoint right here will be also dynamic, but we will do it a little bit later when we will be building our first pipeline. Now, in order to read the environment variable in our code generation config, 
we need to adjust slightly our script in package.json file. So I go there and I'm gonna add the string minus r, which means require, and then the name of the plugin called .nv slash config. And then in the end of this command, we need to define where the .nv file is located. So we say that config path is in, under Hasura server folder and there will be a .nv file. And after this, all those variables from our .nv file will be available inside the codegen YAML file. Great. Now let's try to test our changes. So I go to our .nv file and I'm going to change just the admin secret. Then I have to restart our Docker containers. All right, it has been restarted. And now I will go to the Hasura React app and I'm just try to run the code generator. And you can see that my code generator still works perfectly. Now let's check if we didn't break Hasura CLI config. So I go to Hasura server folder and let's try maybe run the metadata apply. And you can see that it works as well. And what about our web application? Okay, it looks, it looks like application works fine as well. All right, guys, that's it. Uh, I would say this is a great start. So let's continue and see you in the next lesson. All right, guys, that was it. I hope you enjoyed this video and see you in my course or in my next video on YouTube.